seven o'clock. Okay, oh, that's off, that's right. Okay, so Mary Ann Fraser Lyons. Here. Kyle Campbell. Here. Brian Mason. Here. Robert Pinnell. Present. Genevieve Rodzik. Here. Steve Vitalik. Here. And then Tracy Bankowski. Everyone is present as well as Dr. Peter Peter. Okay, uh, approval of the agenda. Um, we'll have one uh, right off the bat. Set the public hearing for the sign ordinance finalization. Um, we're going to strike that and then we're going to have, um, we'll replace that with sign ordinance discussion. There won't be any action. Does anybody else have anything else you'd like to add? No, we still approve this amendment. Support. All in favor? Aye. Ryan, correct? Yes. Aye. All ayes, motion passes. Okay, public comments on agenda items. Ah, well, they were done with your business and whatnot. The fellow from the county isn't here yet either. Yeah, he's just yet. Plan Jeff Schrader. Oh, cool. Yeah, we've spoken okay. on the phone. I have talked to him on the phone. I, yeah, you know, I'm Errol Kate. Okay. He's better looking in purpose. <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> in person. I have to talk to you about a problem <laughs> with, uh, with uh, land ownership here. Okay. Um, so we're going to have to add that to the bottom to see if it was not put on this agenda. For um, additional public comments. Oh, yeah, it's really good. Oh, it was too. Um, okay, we're going to go back t uh, to agenda. Um, we'll put it after planner's report. What, what are you adding? Public comments. Public comments. Then. Um, it disappeared again. Uh, so it went from the bottom to the top and removed. <laughs> yeah, but we need to public comments on agenda items and public comments on agenda items. Yeah, we just general public comments. So, um, so I need a friendly motion or a friendly amendment from Mr. Pinnell. Uh, yes. And a friendly amendment from Mr. Meissen. And all in favor? Uh, aye. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, approval of the minutes for July third, two thousand eighteen. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, communication, correspondence, and workshop, nothing. Matters of consideration, old business, nothing. New business, um, to set a public hearing for rezoning of Chris Holzbeck Granary property. And I believe, did we get something in our emails on that? Yes. Yeah, the, with the minutes, yeah. the agenda. Yeah. Okay. Did everybody have a chance to look at that? Yes. Did anybody have any questions or well just set the public hearing and did you have anything you wanted to share with that Jeff? Uh, no other than I've, I've looked over the application is complete. Um, I was hoping that the petitioner would be here tonight so you guys would be able to ask him any questions. I mean because last we were at this was not going to fit um, in, as far as industrial correct because of the setbacks. There are there are issues along with it. Yes, I mean the, the it becomes an irregular property if it becomes light industrial. Um, any redevelopment of the property would have to then be gone through you know the site plan process, and during that process, some variances may need to, would would potentially need to be requested for setbacks potentially. I have to look at the ordinance exactly because I'm looking at the, the frontage widths. Um, that's not that's not untypical of a an existing parcel that does get rezoned. So I mean, it wouldn't be a wouldn't consider it completely disqualifying factor, but it could be a factor for your next consideration. And he also just to add, he made an additional um, request for ZBA. That is correct. For his, um, the old hardware store property, correct? That is correct. And that is currently zoned general business downtown district. Um, some of the question is, is some of the services, service people he has in there that he's leasing it to. Uh, 
there is some question as to are those permitted uses. Um, I think what they're looking to do is they were looking to, with that, they're looking to have a uh, Class A conforming, um, about, or having a Class A not conforming use placed upon that, which would allow, if the CDA puts any conditions on it, would allow that use that he has there to continue and to allow him to make improvements to the building, to the facade, and to the facility as it exists currently. So that's what they're, that's what they're currently asking for. That would be going before CDA. I believe that's scheduled for it's later in the month. I want to say the 23rd. So they're going for that 21st. Is it 20? I'm sorry. 20, it's the week of the 21st. 20 yes. Mm -hmm. At 630. Um, so what he's coming to us is strictly the the elevator property he's not it's strictly the elevator property which i think if you have the if you've got the attachments there's a map showing the extent of that property that's the that's the granary property the elevator and then it's additional lot that's next to it it's all combined but it also takes into what was the old feed store um, and that portion of the uh, property, there's about 80 to almost 100 and some, 100, almost 200 some feet um, in front of that property as well. That's all considered part of the same lot. So where Division Street kind of ends, it kind of ends into that property and it's kind of a uh, ambiguous area where the road ends where you turn around where the parking's at. It's kind of undefined. So that whole other property is going to CBA then for the... This entire property, this property here would be coming to us for a result. Yes. Yes. But the other, the front end of the property? The front end of the property being the hardware store proper, yes, that would, that's going to CBA because they are, the zoning ordinance indicates that they are the ones who hear any non-conforming uh, requests. So I just want to make sure my, I mean, will he be here? Do you know that? Is he planning to present or this is all the information that we're when I, when I When I spoke to a representative from this company who was asking questions about how to put the applications together, I strongly suggested that they be here this evening to answer the questions. Someone just yeah. pulled in, so I'll wait Maybe see. they will be here. Okay. Yeah. But I, nobody's got come in yet, so but it could just be someone. Right. And then I, I just want to, um, I have a slight discussion about, so let's say this property did move forward and did become light industrial, and then as he rehabs the property, then um, you mentioned parking lot, for example. So that parking lot would have to be brought up to the, whatever the current code is, am I correct? It, it would, if, if, if an improvement were to be made, if you were going to be expanding the parking lot, re you can repave an existing parking area. If you make any changes to its size, dimension, and number of spaces, then the site plan has to be done, and that kicks in a whole engineering review related to drainage and a whole host of other things that planning and all the sort of engineering things. So any additional improvements that will be done out there, um, we would want to see a site plan come in for them. Do you know if that's an intention? I do not know what his full intention of, of our person left. No, okay. Yeah. Do not know what the full intention of going to a uh, light industrial is there. Okay. Um, there were some mentions about um, securing bank loans. Okay. That the, but I don't understand. I don't know what the details were there. Okay. Well, we to wait for that hearing then. They, they should be here present at the hearing, I would hope. Right, right. Okay. Okay, so we'll ask for a motion to set a public hearing for the rezoning of the Crystal Spectrum for Granary property. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Sorry, Marilyn, we have to wait, okay? Until the end. Um, You're open for public public uh, comments? Not until the end, Marilyn, I'm sorry. Hmm. Okay, so uh, we're going to set this public hearing for zoning. Are we I'm just going to pull the address? Are we going to set the date here? Um, um, it's for next month. Uh, it's for. Three. Three one zero seven one division. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Three zero one seven one. Three one zero seven one. And then next month's meeting is September fourth. And uh, 
the standard. Do you want to start at 7 or do you want to do that at 6.30? I think we can start at 7. Okay. Is everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. At what time? 7. Seven. Oh. Normal time. So we should do a public hearing has to be separate from our normal meeting then? Correct. Yes. So we have a public hearing at 7 and a normal meeting at 7.30? Yeah. 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 Or, or, or you could just gavel it. Gavel it. If no one shows up and you've done in 10 minutes, you can gavel it closed and open up the public meeting. Right. You can always just say it immediately follows. Um, no, it is immediately follows. Yeah, that's probably better. Okay. Oh, so that's the first day of school. It is. Mm -hmm. I probably won't be here. That's. We go out to dinner. Like no, we go out to dinner and all that jazz. I'm just kidding. Big, big deal. <laughs> Not this year. <laughs> okay, I'll just make the motion to set the public hearing um, for 7 p.m. on uh, September 4th for the property at 31071 Division Street, New Haven, um, the Holzbeck Masonry Investments LLC. Is that right? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried there. Okay, sign ordinance a discussion. Um, we were prepared, we were going to be prepared this evening to send um, our sign ordinance out also for a public hearing next month. However, there were some um, legal questionings of sign ordinances in general and lo other local communities um, in regards to freedom of speech and limiting that on our signs. So further, Okay. Um, first of all, I apologize for it. I feel like we got to this point and also pulled the rug out from underneath us on the science stuff. Um, back in 2015, um, the U.S. Supreme Court, I don't know if anybody read any of the support information, but I'll just kind of give a brief synopsis because we've been over it with other staff people for the last couple of days. Uh, 2015, U.S. Supreme Court heard a case, Reed versus the city of Gilbert. In that case, um, it was deemed that the local sign ordinance, um, many elements of it were deemed unconstitutional or in violation of the First Amendment of uh, freedom of speech because elements of the sign ordinance were considered not to be content neutral. Now, when we think of content neutral, we generally think what, what, the, what the thought has always been is we can regulate the place, the time, and the manner in which a sign is displayed, but we can't. Uh, regulate the message. And one of the things that we've done to insulate ourselves since this hearing originally came out was the guidelines were to put a substitution clause in your sign ordinance that basically states that for any commercial type of speech or sign that would be available, like for Dollar General came in and got a monument sign. If they wanted to put Dollar General up on there, they could put it up. If they wanted to put up a message that says, Jesus saves, they could have put that message up. No restrictions. And in that regard, our ordinance is in, is in good standing. We also have a severability clause in our ordinance that basically states that if any one portion of the sign uh, ordinance is found to be either unconstitutional, unlawful, it doesn't negate all the other sections of it. It just basically says we would strike that line out. But as what the Supreme Court went on to decide in Gilbert versus Reed, or Reed versus Gilbert, was that by calling out different types of signs by their type and then regulating them was potentially an impingement of free speech. And I'll give you an example of that. Um, in, our, in our ordinance, we have temporary signs, we have banners, and we have political signs. Our political signs have a duration of time that they can be out and a certain size they can be. Then we have a community, a nonprofit can come to us and get a banner sign for a temporary event. That has a different time frame on it and also a different size and dimension. It happens to be larger in dimension than the political sign. So essentially, the court is saying that in our case, we would be giving preferential treatment to a nonprofit in their message over a politician in their message. That's just one example. Another example becomes where you start to do make exemptions for signs. We have we start off our ordinance like every other community does. These are the signs that we don't care about and will not um, regulate. 
one of them is political science. But just by calling up, it, the, basically the court says, if you have to look at the type of sign it is to make a determination, then you potentially have a content-based regulation. So it opens up a huge can of worms because it hasn't, there's, there's only been three cases that have been heard across the country since the Supreme Court has upheld this hearing. Because there were two, as, as, this, as this case went through the courts, um, two lower federal district courts upheld the city, said, yeah, you're right, it's content neutral, it's content neutral, because you're not restricting the message. But then when the court said, when you look at the type of sign, technically you are uh, uh, restricting the message. In a, one example, uh, in our ordinance, we say we have an exemption for church. Churches and public institutions can have a message board sign that have, is of a certain size, and they don't have to pull a permit or do anything for that. But if someone else wanted to buy, to put up a temporary sign with a similar message, we would make them go through a permitting process. So there is a favorability that's being given there based upon the type of sign. So what I've done is I've gone through the ordinance to the best of my ability. And I, mean, I, I talked to Chris about this. We want to have the attorney look at this as well. I tried to flag all the things that I looked at here that appear to be content-based. And then there's some ones that I'm definitely sure of. And there's other ones where I put a question, is this, is this content-based? And these are some of the things that we would need to resolve. How you resolve these things is the big question. Um, we have, we have, if we just talk about political signs, we almost have no ability to regulate a political sign if we call it out as such. If we were to say, because we have political signs, we have temporary signs, we have special event signs, and then we have just our monuments and our wall signs. The monuments, the wall signs, those elements are, are free of, of, of any issues because it has because there's nothing that states what it is. It's just, we're just saying it's a monument sign, and it's here's where it can be. It can be outside of the right of way, and this is the size it can be. There's no special treatment one way or the other. So is the is the issue like instead of saying political signs, what is it more so that you have to say like we have regulation regarding um, H Y like wire frame. Temporary, temporary. Well, well, I can even say temporary. So, like, that's we, we, we could, so like, is it, you could go with temporary signs, like cardboard signs versus banner versus. Yeah. That doesn't matter what the content. And, and you could say a temporary. We, we could put, and this is what we want to look. This is what we want to check with the attorney and, and do some more exploration over the next thirty days. Say so yes, you can have a temporary sign in a residential area. A temporary sign cannot exceed this size, this and temporary. you can have this many of them. Is there, can we put a length of time? You can have to length of time to it. As long as it's not content. -based. As long as long as as long as one type doesn't get a longer duration or a shorter duration. Can you say a temporary sign and a temporary sign? Right. What the See, it, it wouldn't allow us to set a date for when a political sign can go up and when it needs to be taken down. Right, but if you if you put two weeks on it, I was going to put it up for two weeks, Correct. six months out of the election. Correct. Mm -hmm. What is, does anybody recall the timeline right now? On those? 30 days. 30 days, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, not necessarily the political, but the temporary. For political, for political. 30 days before and five days after the election, not only temporary. Oh, yeah, the temporary one. Yeah, the, there is. Can we go ahead with the ordinance and just let somebody challenge it? So that. Yeah, you, 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 you can. Yeah, like we it. could, but I would, I, I would not ethically feel right recommending you guys to do that because if, it, it, if we pass this, it, it opens the community up to exposure. Mm -hmm. That would be really a decision that would have to be made by council after they talk to the attorney. I don't. I, I think that's above our pay grade to make that decision mm -hmm. at this well, point. I'm just saying, you said there's been three challenges in the United States. There, ha there have been How many years to it? So you've got to get the for lack of a better word, the nut job that wants to come to the community and disrupt it and um, do that. When we discuss this, isn't there one that's local? Isn't no, there's, there's not. Oh, I thought there was no, something no, that. No, no, there's, there's, no, nothing, there's not a local Michigan case well, that we're aware of that's been gone through. Okay. Um, but, we'll add, but what we've looked at is 
We have looked at other communities that have recently updated their zoning. Um, in two cases, the sign ordinance was outside of the zoning ordinance, they didn't touch it. And I think in Sterling Heights, they kind of, they're, they're, they basically are moving ahead and they're electing not to, they, they've identified the elements in the ordinance, the current existing ordinance, that are, that are basically illegal. They're electing not to enforce those, and they've made a resolution not to enforce those until they can fix the entire ordinance. And they're going through that process of, Look, there's a lot of people who do a lot of soul searching trying to figure out how you, how do you come up with something that works that lets you still have control, um, but at the same time doesn't just basically throw your arms up and say, hey, any type of sign goes. What about like a time limit? You know, a, ti a time limit on time limit. the only thing that you could have control over is what mm -hmm. it sounds like. Time, loca time, location, and man. We can still do those as long as we don't call out the type of sign. Because like one of the examples that the court gave, and it, it just seems so benign, is that one of the types of exempted signs that we have in our ordinance is a historical marker. I don't think we have a state historical marker in the village. But we're saying if there was one, we have no regulation of it. But just because we've called it out as a type of sign, as a historical marker, it makes it a content, it's considered content regulated. So just looking at the ordinance on the face, a judge could say, this ordinance is, big, is content related because of these elements in there. It's hard, I, I'm even having a hard time wrapping my head around some of the ways it's how broad it can be. Um, and that's like when I went through here and started marking it up in red, I'm like, there's a lot of red here. Um, but I think the areas that you'll see that aren't in red are the areas that we, we, we can strongly have a footing and stand up. You know, restricting pylon signs, saying that you can have a monument sign in any given district that is of certain size, wall signs of certain size. Those things we can all still regulate. It's just getting around these specialty signs. And these specialty signs would also then include subdivision signs, homeowners association signs. We, we were gonna give an exemption for homeowners to be able to do a, an A-frame board for notifications. We wrote it in the exemptions. That would be that's completely content related based on. So we're giving them favorability over an A-frame temporary sign that you would give someone commercial downtown and one will put one out in front of their business to advertise. Brian, how much do we pay the attorney now an hour? I don't know off the top of my head. Um, I, think yeah, I think in this type of case, if it's like a legal opinion, I don't know if there's a charge. I think it's more if it's like if they're doing court activities. Oh, I thought the hourly or at least the hour they used to be doing stuff like this, they spent X amount of hours doing it, reviewing an ordinance. So maybe, I'm not sure. Because should we maybe wait and see what Utica does and then look at their ordinance and let them pay all the attorney fees? Because I'm guessing it's probably <laughs> 225 250 an hour for an attorney. At least well, it used to be 200 bucks an hour. I imagine you would you'd be correct. I do, my, my staff is working in Utica. They are going before, um, tomorrow night, they will be before city council. They are gonna put a moratorium on moving forward until they until they get some direction as well. So they're kind of in the exact same position with that. They were they were ready to approve this month as well. Look, because this looking to, to me, it's probably an easy ten fifteen thousand dollars in village funds to put at the play with this day thing and research it and figure out, you know, compare it to the court cases. And maybe we should let Utica spend that cash and then steal their well, how does that relate to what we currently have? Hmm? How does that relate to what we currently have in place? Well, and, uh, what we currently have in place is not yeah, enforceable anyway. What we currently have in place and what we're also proposing both, both have both have their issues. Okay. I, I would I would um, I would tend to concur okay. that uh, we may want want to to survey what's going on outside of the village to get a feel for how we proceed because. Um, I, I don't know that there's any advantage in being first in making fixing this because generally people who get, go first get beat up first. That's mm -hmm. one. <laughs> in um, addition, um, as you recall, Chris Silver told us that they were the plan was to not to public notify all of these changes at one time. Correct. So we have quite a bit of time before that would even happen. If we're going to get true. through the whole. So it is something we could revisit. We, we can move forward and come back once we have more information. Because yeah. so our hands are, with that, just based on that, How nothing will be enforced anyway. 
If that makes sense, then we should just. Yeah. I, I would make the recommendation put it on the back burner and yes. proceed with some other items in the next upcoming 30 to 60 days. I then at least get a read on this and return back to it. Compared to like Utica, mm -hmm. how are we in terms? How do we look? Are we in better shape? I would say I would say we're about equal. Okay. Because there's very there, there are many similarities when people lay out their their right. rights. You have your exemptions. You have your your signs that are called out by definition. You start going through those definitions. You start realizing that if someone has to look at the sign to determine what type of a sign it is, then it's probably content related. So if to look at oh well, that's a vertical <coughs> sign, it can only be this size. Then that that becomes content related. Where does that leave us, us with enforceability on the non questionable? Are no problems at all. We can we're see. still good, even though we'll, yes. we'll just follow our existing Absolutely. sign ordinance on the stuff that's more solid. Mm -hmm. okay. I would it just also has a history to it as well versus a new one that we would put in place, correct? True, but I don't know that history makes a difference once it, it once once you have a, re, a a ruling like this that just kind of negates what what you've done in the past was in the past and you have to become current. And okay. At least have it be a lawful and constitutional ordinance. Um, but as far as as far as uh, regulating any of the commercial signs, any of the any of the monuments, those types of things that come in, um, we're the same. I think where would be really challenged is if we had a gas station come in and they want to make some sign changes. Because just because we call, we give different treatment to gas stations in terms of the amount of canopy signs that they can have, what they can have pumps. And since we call them out separately than all other commercial uses, we tend to we're, we're favoring them over other uses. That is a general practice that everybody has done with gas stations for, for decades of science, but this kind of turns the whole thing on its head. So. Yeah, it's a very different use to it. I just have one final question for no purposes. Um, Jeff, all the litigation is done on that, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. It, it has been heard. Um, three of the justices wrote um, wrote opinions um, that were in favor of the court's opinion. Um, and all of the three of them who wrote them, wrote them recognizing that this thing that, that they passed originally, as it's passed, it's why does a tunnel and you could drive a bus through it. Um, but if you if you if you really want to do a deeper dive and look at some of the other things of um, what the other judges wrote, they recognized that. In fact, one tried to give some guidelines on, okay, if you can't do this, this is what you still can do. Place, time, location, outside of the right of way, public health, safety, and welfare. If you base your ordinance on those things, you should be in the clear. But again, since that is just an opinion, that is not the actual ruling. The ruling is, is the broader, more general uh, thing. Where this also calls into question, one thing we're talking about, outside of our realm. Um, this has implications on panhandling ordinances and other types of ordinances that might curtail free speech. Mm -hmm. And I know I believe we do have a panhandling ordinance. Mm -hmm. um, depending on how, I haven't looked at it, but because it's not ours to look at, but depending on how it is written, if it's written for the express purpose of, of requesting money, there was a case brought in San Francisco, um, I think it was San Francisco. Someone brought it against and found that their ordinance was was content-based because it basically stayed a person and basically asking for money on the spot. But the challenge was was the way it was worded. It was the person asking for money on the spot now, they asking for later, do they want to check, do they want food? <laughs> it, it, it's, it, it's silly, but when you break it down, it gets, it gets to the heart of the same type of of regulation, you're, you're 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 making one thing restrictive, and you're not making another thing restrictive. It's okay to man and look at take a check, charge. So that, that's what I have. We're going to take it back to the workshop. I got our staff is pulling our hair off trying to figure out what we're doing. We're talking to other. We are talking to other planning consultants as well. We're working with other communities to see what direction they're going in. We've just initiated it. It's one of those things where, like, it's a hot potato. No one wants to pick it up and run with it. Um, I don't know that there's anybody out there that we've looked at the last week and a half that could say that we could point to and say these guys are the subject matter experts on it, and they're the ones just talk to because they've led so many communities.
moves through the process. It's, this is just, it's just coming right now. You're gonna, we're gonna see more and more communities going through this, trying to figure this thing out. Is um, Utica going ahead with working with their attorney? Is yes, in fact, in fact, in fact their, their attorneys already appended an opinion on it. They did it as a uh, they did it as a confidential document to city council. I'm hoping that after tomorrow night, once they've received the document, discussed it, that we get a copy of it and share with you guys. Because I haven't seen it yet. Can I move the back burner and save some money until we know? Let somebody else spend the research dollars. Okay. We could leave it. I don't know if it's appropriate. We just leave it as a standing item to um, every month. Yeah, I'm giving you guys an update on where we are with the sign ordinance. And, um, and then go forward with that. So we'll just leave it as a standing item. So that, that probably doesn't require a motion or anything. Um, okay. So next subject, ordinance review going forward. So with the sign ordinance on the back burner, um, discussion as to where we go forward next with ordinances. Um, if I could add, I think I think with the sign ordinance on hold, uh, I think the next the next logical place for us to go is to go into the individual districts, take a look at those in terms of their um, their the building regulations, in terms of the amount, of the height, the width, the minimum width of the lots, and that allow us, my staff, to go through it along with a map of the community. Because one of the things we need to do is we need to actually take the ordinance, cross walk it against the map, and see if the numbers make sense to the type of property and the frontages that we have. We know that our heavy industrial right now requires a minimum of 300 feet of front frontage. I don't know where you'd find that unless you assembled all the land from the railroad tracks to Roselle together in one large, you know, start making large parcels up. So we may want to look at that um, to make it easier to actually site additional uses in our heavy industrial and see if there's other issues related to um, the others. I'm, I'm pretty sure we are solid in a residential, mobile home, multifamily. I really don't think there's going to be any changes required there. I think what we really want to take a look at is we want to take a look at the general business, general business downtown, light and heavy industrial. And then the one other thing that I'll make a suggestion on as part of the planner's report is that we have a, a PUD ordinance. We talked a little bit about PUDs before in the past because I think that's how some of the Pembroke signals were done under PUD. Um, the plant unit development um, exists as an overlay zone. Um, it can be applied, I believe, in almost all of the zones that we have. But what it allows for is it allows for more flexibility in terms of the density that's allowed for the development and also allows for mixed use development. So I'll give you an example. Um, I had a gentleman named Mark Bennett uh, call me out of the blue the other day. He was I had a question for a friend of mine about some property he was doing. He was talking about the, the agricultural lots that are on the triangle you know, between Maine, Grash, and 26 Mile. He asked, he's asking what they're currently zoned. I said zone general business. He said, um, would there be any interest uh, in potentially rezoning that to multifamily? Because I potentially have someone who's looking to do a larger type of housing um, development. I said, that would be something that would need to come to the planning commission. I said, I'm certain that the village would entertain any type of growth or opportunity to increase the tax base. Uh, but what I did indicate to him is that our PUD ordinance sets a minimum acreage for a PUD at 20 acres. I don't know that we have that many 20 acre parcels left. We may want to change that and bring that down as low as five because that would allow us to entertain something there. Because prior to this one, there was another company that came in when we actually met with Chris, this probably goes back a year now, where they were looking to do like a elder care facility in that same location where they wanted to have on site housing, they wanted to have a medical facility, convenience retail, all in a, all in a package you know, type of complex. PUD is the perfect tool for doing that because it allows you to, uh, allows the community for us to decide as the planning commission what that mix should look like and work with the developer to put together a site plan as opposed to them coming in and saying, okay, we want to zone it all multi-family multi housing, but then we want all these variances 
you want a variance to do a commercial retail, you want a variance for a medical or dialysis center, or whatever type of things. I think they were talking about the type of memory care type of center, so people with Alzheimer's and stuff like that. So one of the recommendations we would make, long story short, is with our PUD as one of our districts, we may want to reduce the size of that to make it more flexible to the those students in the future. So if you give us the next 30 days, we'll continue to look at the sign ordinance. We'll go through the districts and we'll pull out the things that we think are elements that should be changed and we'll give a rationale for it. Um, bring it to you guys for review. Um, and then what we can do is get your comments um, and then craft what those changes would be. So I'm thinking if we were to do that, we could have those that entire section done by our October meeting, potentially, with a recommendation for council for those districts. So if, if, if that if that sounds feasible, we would do that that way. Okay. Yeah. I think I think once we once we complete that, the only sections that are really left in the ordinance are things that I want to review with the engineer. It's things like parking requirements, setbacks, landscaping, screening, fencing, all those other site elements that are, that are regulated by zoning, but at the same time, they're also looked at by the engineer when the site plans are approved. I think once we walk through that element, we could probably have this, we may not have the sign portion done, I could have the rest of it wrapped up. I would think by December, we could be through with the entire ordinance and then waiting on figuring out what we want to do the signs. Um, that you're good with just going forward. We don't have a motion for you with that. No. Okay. Um, everybody good? Anybody else have anything to say on that matter? No. Okay. Um, matters for discussion? I have a question for Brian if he's got any results back from the council. Right. As far as the PUDs and the uh, permitting through uh, <coughs> uh, the homeowners associations being able to stop the permits until they're approved, you know, until there's an approval from the association. When I brought it up to the President Dilbert, um, he wanted to have a legal opinion on it. Uh, but then I believe that it was brought up at the last month meeting as well. Um, that it was brought up again, wasn't it? Here. Here. Yeah, at this, at this last month's meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't present, so I don't know exactly how that went. So was there an opinion offered? Or did the attorney review it and give us some? It would be. Well, um, but I think, didn't you guys have a discussion on the last meeting and there was some clarification that was made to see more? Uh, just that, I, I believe it was just that it was going to the attorney, correct? That was the meeting before last, it was going to the attorney. Right, we just haven't gotten anything. I haven't heard of anything. Yeah, I haven't heard of yeah, At our last meeting, he was questioning what we really wanted from in terms of that. Sounds like you wanted more clarity. Right, yeah. What he was explaining to us is not what we had talked about originally. Yeah. So he, was, he, was, he just needed some reconfirmation for us. So I think we re reconfirmed what we wanted, and then he was going forward with that information. Yeah, so apparently so when, when I presented it at the council meeting, uh, I don't know, the words that came out of my mouth were not exactly what I thought was said. So um, I thought I was clearly communicating what we had discussed in this meeting, but apparently the way that I had said it made him nervous because the way I had explained it, he thought that I was saying that count that the building department would need to um, come to come to the HOAs for approval. And I said, and I didn't realize that the, at the council meeting that that's how he was interpreting it. Um, I thought I was being clear that I just meant when they come for the building permit they should have the letter of HOA approval, just like they would do for a fence or anything else. Um, so, yeah, I'll have to follow up with that. And we made that clear at the last meeting that you weren't here. And, uh, Correct. Sounds like it, from what mm -hmm. I understand. Yeah. So I figured it would have got handled at the last council meeting, so I was... He wasn't at the council meeting. Mr. Dilbert? Correct. But the attorney so, was. Um, yes, he was, but it didn't come up because he wasn't there at, and I wasn't at the planning meeting to bring it up. Okay. Well, if you could bang the door on that yeah. someone, please. Yeah, I'll take that as well. And another thing, I, I, I pictures here, because if you look at the setbacks of the homes already on the street, they're set back 
at a distance. So you know, you see nice even row of homes. The two they just threw up, um, the sidewalk literally goes about where, it's, where it fits with everybody else's house, the distance. It's probably 10 feet from the house. Is that Pembroke you're talking? Really? Yeah. Do you, have those, just, uh, do you know some pictures or those pictures at? I passed them around. Oh, I, I, I don't see that. Do you know what the site plan looks like around? Because sometimes this does happen. Not too much time to find them. I don't remember that standing out when I originally saw Pembroke's site plan. Okay. Um, you know, that there was jogs in the sidewalk. Keeping with the jog in the sidewalk, you're barely going to fit a car in the driveway. So, but this is just another one of the things where there isn't enough oversight there with Lombardo building. Whether from the building department or from us or from whoever in the association that you know, if you can literally see how these homes are considered yeah. curved streets. Yeah. So the pictures were hard to take. Yeah, it's really hard to But if you go look at it, you'll see it's like straight down a curved street. The house at that time is going to look close to the house. Like, it's hard to tell from the pictures. You can see. Yeah, the no, pictures are not that great. But go take a look at it. And it'll, it'll you know what this could be, though, too? Clear oh, sense to you. I think. Did, did you bring the number? Did you bring your house up? Um, on the Cole Street. Across from my house, how the road kind of curves in that court. Yeah. Kind of like a court. They were talking about putting those houses further back as opposed to where they're in line now. Was it you that it was, that, was, that was a sort of discussion. The, the, the footprint's probably different from the original ones. So, because this could be what you're. If they're centering the house on the lot, you know, my question is. This isn't that case. It's, it's, not not like a, it's not like what you're talking about. Okay. My understanding the is that it was, up, yeah. it was brought up uh, at a meeting when we had uh, Greg Lindingland at, um, at a board meeting. And what was described, and, and hopefully I'm remembering it correctly, but it has to do with the, the, the face of the garage. The, the setback from the road is, is based off of the setback, um, the front of the garage. And on um, the houses that were previously built, the garage isn't necessarily flush with the entire house, but now on the houses they are building, it is. And that's why you'll see like houses that'll look, that the new houses when they're sprinkled in look like they don't, it's not all. The like, car is like the same way, like the house right in front of me and the house next to it. The new one is a little bit closer. A little farther forward. Yeah. yeah, you gotta go look at this because both your scenarios well, I, I, are not exactly what's but going I, I on. Know. Yeah. I Their know. driveways are so deep that they could fit two oh, cars, cars gotcha. you know, deep before it hits the garage. So now this one barely, you're gonna have to move the sidewalk so it's gonna have to be a jog. It's not consistent with the other homes. Well, the sidewalk, the sidewalk should just be set off the street. That should be. Yeah, but even in, even in our subdivision, like the, the um, distance from the garage to the sidewalk isn't consistent. This is this is probably about a good twenty foot difference. Well, because I know like my neighbor, they can fit two cars between their garage and their sidewalk, but I can only fit one and just barely fit one. Oh, you yeah, said that, that design of the that different house. model. Yeah. They get the garage set way back. Right, they're saying there's different. These are different models from when they were built before, different from each other. I mean, there's so many variables here that that's how, I don't know how you look at it and say, you know, you'll be able to see it when you go go by there and look at it. My example that I'm making here is that there just is an oversight. Because this, this will clearly show you when you look at it that it should be the same distance so that at least they look like a row of houses. Well, but, and that's another thing. The distance is not fixed. It doesn't say it has to be 12 feet. There's a range. Right. Right? Yeah, but you're, so many feet. for the character of the neighborhood, but that's not how the that homes are there. That doesn't matter. Yeah, the, the law or rules are that there's a range of setbacks between here and here, and I have to line them up. But that's what I'm, I'm like saying. More character for not like that, in my opinion. That's what I'm saying, is that those, that setback of the house would have been laid out as part of what they could, where their buildable area should be on that lot from their original plan. When, when the plan's made, they have a buildable area that's laid out. Mm -hmm. So with these particular homes where they're set back further from the street. What street is this on? This is on the avenue. 
Which one? It's at Pembroke Abbey. Oh, right. Okay, right. Across. Yeah. And like I said, the pictures are very poor, but. I wasn't getting out of the car. It doesn't show. It was actually yeah. raining. <laughs> so is that Virginia? Is that is that the end? I think it's Virginia. And Kyle is correct. There is okay. a barrier. Yeah. There is so you have, there's a minimum that matters. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So exactly. And anywhere in there. It, but it's curving. But as so far as I'm not sure if it's coming. something you yeah. control that they're so all lined up. Right. You know, perfectly. Well, when mm -hmm. when the when the plans are done, you give them the buildable area mm -hmm. within the lots. Mm -hmm. Right. And you do that in. A, you know, the homes are lined up. Mm -hmm. Right. You but there's a minimum and there's a maximum. I don't think it would be our place, as Kyle said, to say, we know the minimum is 10 and the max is 20, but we want you to set it at 15. But it, in, in saying that, though, that's for building a home in a residential spot. This is a PUD. So you gave them where they well, could there's build there's been their some homes. changes on this, though, since the original we and we're all aware of that. But does the PUD even spell that out that much detail? Well, I just want to interrupt because yeah, we, don't even, the pictures. we don't even know, and Brian and I were just discussing this, the PUD is currently active. There was the, um, are you familiar with the settlement? The consent agenda, or the consent um, little, little bit. agreement there. You know, so we don't even know really what they're working under over there because that was, by some some people's perception dissolved. By Lombardo's perception. They do whatever they want. Well, according to this agreement, they can. So that is the perception. Now, do we challenge you know, I don't think that's for us to challenge. I think it's probably more for them to sit with with you guys. The village should be challenging. For, Correct. For them to build at all, I would think they would have had to be aware of these stuff. Um, would, I would or stick to it. it. Maybe or maybe an agreement change. to stick to it, but are they obligated to? I, I'm just throwing questions out there because I really don't know. Are they obligated to stick to it, or there, there, there would have been an original site plan with the PUD that would have laid this out. Um, that would have been approved by this body here. They were planning right. Yeah. Um, but if there were any modifications to that that were made by the court. Um, I, I've not seen those. They, they would, no. I would imagine those records are in the building. They should be there at least. Um, I, if I recall what I had heard about there, there was a consent judgment, but I think, I don't know how much it changed the dimensions, the lots, or the, or the elevations that we're building them in. I thought there was some type of agreement or some type of ruling that the developer would not have to pay certain fees to the village in terms of the tap fees for the sewer, the water, that somehow the village was putting the bill on those. But well, this is all stuff you should be given as our planner so that you and the building inspector know what's going on. Mm -hmm. To me, th this is what I see is that they can just do whatever they want because no one's oversighting it any anyways. Well, they Nobody should... knows anything for sure except that they're building whatever they want and we're letting them. There's nobody looking over it. I think that would maybe be a better discussion for maybe the building department and then um, probably council. Maybe they need to have a discussion of you know what, what information does the building department have and is the council aware that that's what they have? And are they showing that yes, they are following the plan that was set forth, the consent of judgment, whatever it said. I think that's a discussion for those groups of people. We're not making any decisions regarding it, so. No, we're just making the rules for no one to follow. I mean, this well, no, not necessarily. necessarily. Rules were set at the table regarding that, but those rules were, um, what's the word when you, uh, they were uh, overridden by a consent judgment. Yeah, but it doesn't sound like anybody knows nothing for sure. That's what I'm trying well, to say. Well, it sounds like your question is who's providing the oversight yeah. of those. This is exactly what I'm looking at. So no one is providing oversight. How do we find out who's providing the oversight? It's a question. You're right. That's so exactly what I'm asking. Rob, would you be willing to take <laughs> on that yes then? That you would 
either speak to, I think it would be appropriate that you would let the council know that you're going to be having the discussion with the building department. I'll never take that much. You're going to have a lot of good person. How long does it take us this time? Pardon? How long have these pictures taken? Um, just before I left, uh, when I didn't go back to the office, I was going to email them to you. Um, so, 28th, maybe? The 27th. Oh, I mean, pretty current bills. I mean, the information should be more, kind of easy to get. Perhaps, you know. I'm sure there's a reason for it. <coughs> Is that maybe something you could correspond with them, maybe email or make a phone call to find out? I'll give it a shot, but I okay. don't think it's really something. Well, we could leave well. it with Brian to take the counsel if you are. We'll go look at it, Brian, and see what you think. Yeah, I'll take a look yeah. at the, the property. I think um, it's pretty obviously poorly done. You know, when you've got all the houses set back so many feet from the street, and all of a sudden you need two new ones, which already don't look anything like the neighborhood. Are sitting on the front of the sidewalk, you know, where the sidewalk has to be moved in order to accommodate what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Now, yes. on your PED, where it sets the foot from where the street where the sidewalk lands, and all those things are on there, so it's not, it's definitely not following. It, it tells you how many feet you got to put the sidewalk from the curb, and how you know, all those things are in your PED, mm -hmm. so it's definitely not being followed. That's what I'm trying to get to is that. Everything we do here to me is kind of a waste of time if we never follow up. Make sure someone follows up on it anyways. We might as well leave it all alone because it's just a waste of time to do something and then no one's going to do it anyways. They're just going to do what they want to do. That's what I feel like. I feel like I'm wasting my time. You know, can't change the past because we can make sure the future is. No, this was done a couple weeks ago. Right? I mean, but that whole agreement, that whole PD is in the past. So it's not we, have past. To review, we, have, we have a chance to review the, P, the new the PUD ordinance and review future PUDs so that something like this doesn't happen again. That's where we can come in and be helpful. There's nothing you're going to be able to do about my right. number. And we should really find out what the consent says to find out because we only know what the information we've been told. I mean, there could be a lot more detail in there than we're aware of, right? So that's probably. It would be good maybe to that. that would be a good place to start. It may be nice to, that we get it too. It may be, maybe good to have that just for the discussion on the PDs. Yeah. So we can see what happened to it. Yeah. They got taken to court in Park Park. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
document as our procedures or policies change, we can amend that document. Nothing is stolen with that. Okay. And then the one other thing that I do want to bring up, and I'm sorry, I probably should have said something to you about it first, but we kind of discussed it the other day. Could you briefly explain to everybody the concept that we discussed in regards to Gratiot um, and the... Uh, oh, and the, and the potential for a, um, a, a court authority. Yeah, now this was just something we explored. It's definitely not something I want to put on the table right now. Or, um, but I was thinking maybe down the road, like in January, something for us to think about after we finish up the ordinances. Well, what Jen was asking about is what other tools are out there to potentially um, uh, promote investment in, in an area. One thing that communities do is um, through, the, through, the, through, the, through the function of tax increment financing, um, there are a number of um, tools that are offered by the state as economic development tools. Um, how they perform is, is very market-based, uh, but what they allow you to do is um, designate an area in your community. Uh, in this case, we're talking about the Gratiot Corridor, potentially those commercial properties that are along there. Um, you can create what's called a Corridor Improvement Authority. What that authority does is it actually creates an authority, creates a board of so many members, um, that authority then can do what's known as tax increment finance. So what they can do is you can go to the assessor, once you've defined a district, you can go to your local township assessor and say, I'd like to get a baseline tax assessment of all of the properties within this district. They'll tell you what all the taxable values are of those. And you total them all up and that sets a baseline of this is the taxable value for the district. Now, if you pass the Tax Increment Finance Improvement Authority, any investments that are made in that district that increase the taxable value of any of those properties above that baseline tax can be collected by the authority and then be used for improvements in the corridor. And those improvements could range from anything from planting flowers to a facade improvement program where you're helping improve businesses um, to even um, there's, there's a wide range of things. And the, the reason I hesitate saying in a court or approved authority is we only have one such authority in Macomb County um, that I'm aware of, and that is in Harrison Township. They just created one at Jefferson and Shook Road. They're looking to create, they're looking to revitalize um, that little commercial district that's there. They want to tie it into a larger plan that they have for the um, waterfront as you go south of there. And you'll get to an area that's called the, uh, it's where the uh, uh, Clinton River cut or the, the spillway comes through. The DNR has a boat launch there. There's a marina there. So they're trying to kind of build a little marine industry there. Um, they've been collecting for three years. They've made some improvements. They've been able to put some money aside because of improvements that have been done in the corridor. Um, they've turned it around and done signage. They've done some branding, things like that. Um, probably the best example of a tax increment finance authority I can think of is the city of Richmond. City of Richmond over 30 years ago established their tax increment, uh, they basically call it their TIFA district, tax increment finance authority. They included um, almost all of their downtown Main Street from the entry to the community down in Muttonville all the way up to the north end of town where the uh, Home Orchard Trail, Trailhead Park is. They include their school district properties and all of their properties that make up the Park complex in the historic district. Um, over the last 25 to 30 years, they have been able to collect those tax dollars and re-leverage them and invest them back in the community. They've made big investments in the park using that. They've made investments on Main Street. They have, over a period of time, um, they have run a facade program for a while when they were helping businesses. They were able to purchase property that was for sale that they wanted to demo and put on the market. They had a greenery property, I think it's next to their hardware store, uh, where the old city hall used to be. If you guys are familiar with Richmond at all. Um, it can be a great tool. Um, the, there's, they'll be detracting. If, if you go forward with a, a, with a TIF, a district, they're general there. If you detract, you're saying, well, that's taxes that the community won't get because they're being siphoned off. 
But in a lot of cases, without the authorities, the argument is if you didn't have the authority to prove the district, the investment wouldn't come. You wouldn't see it anyway. Um, but then also, with any of these authorities, um, a board is established, a plan that's put together for the district. It identifies the types of investments. It can identify specific goals and objectives that are to be uh, achieved by that authority through the collection of that tax uh, increment dollars. Um, some communities, once they've achieved those goals, will disband the authorities. But most of them are seeing that those authorities, after they've been in business for 20, 30 years, and you've been making it, collecting that revenue, that what they're doing is they reassess their plans, they reissue a new plan, and set a new set of goals moving forward. So it is an option. I don't know how much it will benefit us without there being substantial development in the corridor. It's something that could be a long game item. Um, uh, if we knew that, uh, if we knew that six months from now, uh, if, we were, if one were to be established six to eight months from now, that we had major investment coming, and it could be a real bit, you know, or say a tractor supply wanted to expand or something like that, someone who's existing in the corridor. Um, it is an option, I'm just throwing out, we were just discussing it, because it is a tool. It's one of the few tools that the state has left communities with. There's been a lot of tax incentives. There's been a lot of different other types of uh, attraction items to bring other businesses into communities. And as the state has whittled away those programs, the programs that have remained um, and that seems to have support from um, both sides of the house, the legislature, are the tax increment finance um, capabilities. So, with that said, just if you guys want more information, we can get you guys more on it. Um, it's, it's kind of a long road to set one up. I mean, if you do have to create an authority, you have a board that gets established. Because it is an authority, it has the ability to levy it. It's considered a taxing body. So this, the, the body that you set up for that would be very similar to the HCMA parks or the Great Lakes Water Authority, because they are another entity that kind of sits over the community, but that has the ability to collect those taxes. Kind of like the housing authority. Exactly. Yeah, you guys have one of those that were yeah. so very, very similar. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to throw that out there for people to think about. Not something we'll jump on right away, but maybe when we're done all this, maybe. So the next two years played out for the planning commission now. There we go. That's right. Good <laughs> work. Um, anybody else matters for discussion? Um, good forward thinking. I like that. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, just two things. Did, did you raise your emails? Were they able to help you yes. in the office? I sent I sent one out to everybody. Hopefully, everyone got it. I believe I, I did. think I did. I think did I did. Oh, yeah. Did you have a and said, I got you? Yes. <laughs> oh, did I? <laughs> 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 did I thought you got it. Yeah. I'm still getting mixed, though. I'm getting the village email and I'm getting my personal email. I'm only getting personal email. Like, okay. I'm only getting my village email. Yeah, I. I I'm still getting on my personal account, which I mean, I think Korea needs to get a list of so, yeah. Everybody's well, I think, so, what I would like well, to propose is I will put together an email on behalf of the Planning Commission, I'm willing to, I should say, and I will send it to all the different bodies saying that this is moving forward, this is our means of communication, Perfect. and that you know we would prefer not to our personal emails moving forward. But does anyone object to that? I will. It will happen in um, the next week or so. I, and I'll put a date. I'll give everyone about a couple days. To I personally, frankly, I check my work email much more than I would go in and log into this right. village email. It's so I mean, if you need me to get something sooner rather than later, it's going to be. <laughs> so do you have? You do have a village email set up though. I do. I, the, the, it, it's really. Um, it's really the most appropriate and professional method of communication. I have like four or five different emails. So I mean, some of them are joined where they all come to my work email. This one particularly is not. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if it's something that needs a quick response, it's probably gonna get responded to faster if it goes to my work email. Right, so it is whatever you're comfortable with. I guess I just know myself and I, I think many other people agree that 
um, it, it's just not in our best even personal interest that it's going through our personal email because that exposes all of your email then to any FOIA requests. And, and I don't want that, you know, in my personal life, and I don't think anyone else does. We have this. My, I my think opinion, they would have fun with all my emails. <laughs> I only have about thirty. In my, in my opinion, so. is if, if so, if someone wants to FOIA your personal email, it's going to be very difficult for millers to get you access to your personal email without getting. Court orders and stuff like that. I understand that, but so, that comes at an expense I, to the village, so that's what I'm trying to avoid. avoid right, it's, exactly. So that's why I'm saying that we should use the village email just right. because, you know, for someone who's tried to get FOIA requests before from emails, you know, I, 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 I'm only going to want to use village email just because it's the right thing to do. Because we shouldn't be, there's, there's no law that says elected officials we have to use village email, but. It's what I would recommend sure. doing um, is um, set up your village email address on your phone in the email app. Yeah. Um, because I find if I see the notification on my phone, then I'm at least more apt to go log into the webmail. And That's what it. I did. Because like when I'm at work, my um, my company network, I can log into the village webmail for about five or ten seconds, and then I get logged out um, automatically. So it's a real pain in the butt when I'm at work. Uh, but at least if I have it on my cell phone, I know, oh, hey, I got an email and I need to check it. I was trying to see if there's a way to auto-forward. I was going to ask that. Does anybody know that? Because I'm not familiar with that auto-forward thing, but I'm wondering if my, that would be an option. My MSN and my Macomb County email all go through my phone into one I see. email thing. I don't know how yeah, it's I done, but it does it. Yes, I'm lucky. Well, and I don't know. Yeah. I'd have to figure out how to do that. I don't think there's anything really pressing here that has to have an immediate response. Would everyone agree with that? Right. So don't, I don't want you to feel pressured like you're missing out on something. I think if it was important, we can always. Yeah, call you text show. Out. And okay. I have, I've gone on and I've logged in, but there's nothing, no email there. But then it seems like, I mean, Jeff's email comes to my Macomb County email, okay. and then I see it right away. Right. And I mean, that's my preference. I get it quick. So. Would you? Well, that's up to you guys, whatever you think. That email's easy to access in life way, too, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Easier than Gmail. So if we want to pause on that for a moment and think about it until yeah. next month and everybody we can collectively decide if we want to use that method or not, I would prefer that just my village email gets used personally. If I may suggest, yes. just because we are so kind of so close to, um, maybe we pick the goal of like the, the next crew coming in. Perfect. So when our next clerk comes in, she's in there with a clean set of I like that. emails and that way that, you know, the, the the, everybody transitioning, they'll mm -hmm. be transitioning anyways. Yeah, I like that. Right? Yeah, so that's, that, that's a great idea. Maybe the next month I can go on and try to see if I can. Yeah, and that gives us all a couple months to kind of figure it out. And I think less work for yeah, everybody. Uh, yes. My mail? You just use like your own. No, I Well, you can download that same app that. Should be added to your email account same product to get your email. Yeah. And just the second thing was is. Um, in defense of Rob a little bit, he was very passionate about the rules, and I am as well, I'm a rule follower, but I believe we had a discussion early on when we started this adventure that not only were we going to do all of this work, but we had intentions of then working with council and figuring out methods and procedures and policies so that all of these rules were enforced. Okay. So I just wanted to say that. And I will um, also have a conversation with Rob, so he then he missed it. So I just want to right. that we do support. That's what it looks like. We're not the rules to play. Right, right. So I agree. Absolutely. Yeah, I think, um, and, and I don't know if I had a chance to actually give an update back to the planning committee based off of my conversation with council regarding all of yeah. this stuff, because I wasn't at the last, at last month's meeting. Um, so we had discussed the whole method of like, how do we want to go about this? Do we want to planning to get just boom, slap down a big thick stack and say, here you go, council, this is everything all at once. Um, the, the, I believe, pretty much what the, what the um, output was is that we can kind of piecemeal it to them and we can vote and approve on it piecemeal, but then the actual publication of it would be all at once because there's costs involved with that. They don't want to go and, and do a publication for just the administrative updates and then a publication just for signs and then a publication just for this. 
So um, uh, that's uh, the administrative updates uh, was being reviewed by the uh, village attorney. Um, I had informally gotten a confirmation that they are okay with it. They did not have it um, at last month's meeting. So um, this month I'm gonna make sure that they do have it. So we will be voting on the administrative updates at the August meeting. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Matters for discussion? Planning report? Oh. Good. Uh, public comments, Marilyn. Marilyn? No. I oh, yeah. I didn't come to talk to you guys. Oh, okay. I can't see this guy right here. Oh, oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so then. Who uh, wants to talk over with you after I leave? Find a dandy. <laughs> Did you raise your hand though, Marilyn, and have a comment earlier? And we had to put it up? Uh, that's okay. We'll wait until your, your open house. I was going to give you some advice because I've dealt with those people over there before. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, go ahead, get your feet wet. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, motion to adjourn at 8 12. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Support. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And